Like one of the verse, I'm not sure if I'm misquoting it. You know, if I have a brainy preference, you know, it's going to all the creature and preach the gospel, or you know, going to the world and preach the gospel to, to all creatures, to every creature. So to me, I need to be available. It's not me, God, give me that person, or it's just having that. You know, it, it could be a child. You know, it could be a young people. It could be a, a mother. It could be a very old person. And to me, it's like, I have no say to that. It's like, if God is leading you, go to them, because that might be the last chance that they will hear the gospel. And sometimes it bothers me, like, God, was I was too focused on somebody, and I skipped that person. And to me, it's like, can we have more people? <laughs> you know, can somebody else be with me? And you know what, I'm reaching to this somebody. And today that happened while we were done, you know, with this thing. I'm like, I'm running out of drugs. Do I start screaming? And <laughs> you know, I start because I see people were like wondering what we were doing. And so it could be challenging when when you have that heart to reach people, but it just it just take one step at a time. Like I remember one illustration when there were a lot of starfish by the ocean and they were dying, and that little kid was just like throwing the starfish back to the ocean and another person was like, what are you doing? You know, you can't save them all. You know, they're gonna die. But he took the starfish and threw it back to the ocean. Well, I cannot save them all, but I'm saving this one. So it just that like resonates to me. I cannot reach everyone, but this one, I'm gonna tell them about Jesus. This girl, this boy, this, this young person, this student, this make a difference in their life. So. I know it's it's big, but we have a big God. Yes, come on, la. Oh, for the pizza, no, no, balang, no, no, se mitya, la. So, shan yung lagi ko na share sa mga tao itong kusa ting salvation. Nga if ever kunin tayo ni Lord, tiyak po tayong we're going to heaven kasi himek nilang po yung buhay natin. Nang dito tayo ngayon, we don't know what will happen tomorrow, di ba? Anytime. Give me a few minutes, okay lang ba? I-share ko ng word of God sa'yo. Uh, recap ko na lang. First of all, siya ang sabi po ng Bible dito sapagkat ang lahat ay nakasala at hindi nakaabot sa lahat ay ang Diyos. Wala pong taong perfect. Lahat po tayo nakamali. Kahit mabait ka, kahit pastor ka, first day pastor ako. But, unang taong perfect. Alam natin yan. And because of that, siya ang sabi po ng Bible ng kabayan ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. Alam natin ba? One day darating yung oras. Di ba? Kahit 19 years old tayo, I am 30, ano po? Eh, hindi po alam when God will take me home. But sabi po ng Bible dito, kung kita matakot at hindi mo sa mapataya, makita mo ng Diyos, mga mamatay tao, mga kiyapid, mga gaway, mga samba sa mga, sa mga Diyos, Diyos sa lahat ng sinungaling, ay may bahagi sa lawa niya sa poet supre na siyang ikilang kamatayan. So siyempre nagsinungaling tayo, guilty na tayo sa harap ng Diyos. But ang good news mo siya, sabi ng Bible, ipinadaman ng Diyos ang kanyang pag-ibig sa atin. Binigaya si Jesus Christ to save us. Paling ba, sabi natin, I was a blind person. Nagkukross ko ng street. Eh, Siyempre, sabi natin kaibigan tayo at saka muntik na ko ma, ma faith ng sasakyan. Ano gagawin mo? Siyempre, sabi po kuya Ken, huwag ka doon. Diba? So ganun po ginawa ng Diyos dahil alam, na, alam ng Diyos na muntik na tayo mapahamak sa impyerno. Gumawa siya ng paraan. Binigay yung anak niya si Jesus Christ mismo para i-rescue po tayo. Para hindi po tayo mapahamak sa impyerno. Sabi po ng Bible ang regalo ng Diyos ay buhay na wala hanggang. Iwanag naman. <laughs> Sabay na po tayo, sabi natin ito sa Panginoon. Panginoon Jesus, ngayong araw, alam ko po na ako'y makasalanan. Hindi ko po kaya na iligtas ang aking sarili. I believe na matay ka para sa akin at na buhay ka muli. Please, Jesus, save me. Take me to heaven when I die. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Ringing in your heart. Joy Hello po, kuya. Excuse me. Di mo masahin lang tungkol sa Panginoon. Sorry. Pasensya sa bala. Tungkol lang po sa Panginoon. Nagbibigay kami ng mga tracks. Thank you. Saan po kayo nagsa-church? Wow. Ah, sa Catholic? Ah, di po. Born again. Born again. Ah, praise the Lord. Ah, baptist din kami parang born again din. Kaya di pala, ano pangalan nyo? Gian. And... 
what does a person have to do to go to heaven? Ano ba kailang gagawin natin para matiyak natin? Ikaw, Brad, ano palagay mo? So first of all, if you say in the Bible, in Romans 3 verse 23, sapagkat ang lahat ay nakasala at hindi nakaabot sa lahat ng Dios. Wala pong taong perfecto, de ba? May tao daw ng perfecto dito, wala naman eh, de ba? So dahil don po sa abi ng Bible ng kabayan ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. One day, darating po yung oras ng kunin po tayo ni Lord. Makiapid mga kaaway, mga sumasama sa mga Dios, Diosan at lahat ng sinong aling ay may bahagi sa lawa na niya sa apoy at sopre na siyang ikaw lang kamatayan. Very clear dito ito nga, lahat tayo nagsinungaling. So, ganyan dito po tayo nga mapahamak sa impyerno. Para hindi ka mapahamak sa impyerno, simply sumampalataya ka kay Jesus. Amen? Sabi ni Jesus, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father. But by me, to go to heaven, it's not about religion, it's not about good works, hindi dahil mabait ka, hindi dahil perfect yung buhay mo, but because of Jesus Christ. To go to heaven, it's a gift. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Amen. Sino, Kuya? Thank you po sa time nyo. Ingat po kayo. God bless. Thank you. Apo. Shake. Apo. God bless po. Ingat po kayo saan. Amen. I had this wonderful experience. I was in Haiti. I got graduated, so I was fresh out of college. You know, you have that, yes, let's win the world for Christ. And... It just slowly dawned on me. It's not that way, you know. It takes time to bring people. It takes time to know them, and you know. So there was this experience. Uh, we had this group coming from our school, and it, it was their last day. We're leaving, and we went to the school. They were like, "Come tomorrow," but the group was leaving. So the end was in me. I was staying. So I woke up that morning, and went to that school and preach, share the gospel. A few months later, um, we had this. A group that was doing a basketball program and then that one of the student heard me sharing the gospel and he came to that program again it was like God working and you know he had this program he had the certificate he's like hey, can you hold this for me and the first time I'm like okay sure and then we get you know get to contact each other and I keep inviting him to church you know getting to know he was like nah I'm Catholic I have my own church I'm like, okay sure and then we keep on messaging, you know, uh, play basketball, invite him home. It took months. Sometimes like, okay, <laughs> my pe my parents are like, you know, why invest in some, some, he doesn't even come to church, you know, why bother? But for some reason, something was keeping him, was like, you know, invest in him, invest in him. And slowly, you know, one time he came to church and the next time, and you know, a few months later, no. And then it's it just like how God works. And then there was an opening for him to go to Bible college in the States. I'm like, you know, why not? And God worked it out where he got denied his first visa. Second visa, I got denied. I get back to, this, to the Philippines. And he got accepted with his visa to go to Bible school. I don't know, it was like I saying, you know, I don't need you. <laughs> I'll, work, I'll let him in with my own timing. And then he got there. Four years later, he's about to graduate this year in Bible school, you know, and winning souls, preaching the gospel, and I believe he's doing more <laughs> for the ministry. I think that was one of the st most striking to me. That's like one person, that months, that years that you're spending to them is a lifetime for them. So I believe it's an encouragement to us. You know, we can't get discouraged. Like, why bother? Why bother play basketball, you know? Why bother take time to go out and visit with them or get to know their family? Because it might be the next evangelist. It might be the next pastor that God is doing greatly. So to me, it's like, don't minimize, minimize that opportunity, but let God use it for His glory. My name is Christian Johanada. I was born in the Philippines when I was four years old. Uh, my parents moved to Haiti and they become missionaries there. And until now, they are serving in, in Haiti. Uh, three years ago, I decided to come visit the Philippines. And little did I know that COVID was going to hit big time in the Philippines. And since then, I got stuck. I prayed about it. I was, Lord, why am I here? And it's just a confirmation that he wanted me to be here in the Philippines. You know, being in the ministry, growing up in Haiti, you know, I always see my parents, they're always involved in the ministry. And all that they do 
it's all about God. And it taught us as a young child, you know, to always put God first. And being around that, you know, um, place, it just gives you that um, hunger and for, you know, to be part of the ministry and to just win souls and uh, do more for the kingdom. I get involved, you know, when I go out in the streets. It's just, once you know you are saved, it's just you have to have that burden for the lost. Because, you know, at the end, all that we do in this earth is just going to pass away. And the question we're going to ask ourselves, how many people have we reached? I mean, if we are truly a Christian, you know, and we know there's a lot of people out there that are still lost, why not share the gospel? Why not give them a track and share to them? So yesterday or the other day, I was in the mall and I was just buying something. And then I just, you know, started talking to the salesperson and, you know, the Holy Spirit working my, you know, was speaking to me. And I was like, just ask them if they were to die today, are they 100% sure they were going to heaven? And one of the salesperson told me that she goes to church, but she's not 100% sure that she was going to it. And so I said, okay, so since there's no customers, let me just share real quick how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. And just going through the plan of salvation and no question, just straight right to the plan of salvation. And at the end, they decided to trust Christ as their personal savior. And I told them, you know, if you truly trust Jesus as your personal Savior, if you die any time, you are going straight to heaven. And other um, ministries that I'm involved in, Open Door or here in Bataan, is teaching the kids and helping my brother. He's a pastor here in Balanga, Bataan. I'm helping him with the ministry. We go out um, doing Bible studies around the area and you know, teaching the people. We have a um, discipleship program at the church, just helping other people to grow in their Christian walk with God. If you were to die today or any time kunin kayo ni Lord, are you 100% sure yes. you're going to heaven? Yes. Okay, tell me how, how, how sure you are. How I'm sure yeah. I am. Because, kasi, kung ano yung ginawa ni Jesus, mm -hmm. di ba? Uh, sinapripise niya yung life niya for sa ating mga tao na even hindi pa nila tayo pinapanganak is may kasalanan na tayo nakakabit sa atin. Mm -hmm. But, paano natin gagawin? Paano tayo nakakamake sure na pakapunta tayo sa uh, heaven? Oh, diba? oh, oh. Kasi by doing um, sharing the gospel of God okay. of course um, apply it okay. sa life tsaka yung Hindi naman yung the way na ginawa siya ng God, but the way na susundan natin kung ano yung nasimulan niya. Sige, sige. Okay, example. If Jesus were to stand in heaven, in front of the door, I said, why should I let you in? What would you tell him? And he's standing in the door right now. I'm your daughter. <laughs> I'm your daughter. Okay, okay. What about you? What, anong sagot got mo sa kanya? Ko na ginawa ko yung best ko para okay uh, okay all right what about you ay siguro kasi mga aral na tinuturo niya yung para uh, sa mga parents ko rin kasi tinuturuan kami so parang na-apply ko siya sa buhay ko okay all right that's that's good that's good so far so i will share real quick with you if you have a few minutes okay is dito sabi ng ano bible sa romans romans 3 verse 10 sabi dito as it is written there is none righteous. No, no, no. Walang tayong perfecto dito sa lupa. In verse 23, sabi dito, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 5 says, But God commended His love toward us, in that while we are sinners, Christ died for us. But God showed us that He loves us so much. By what? By dying. By dying on the cross. So after two days, ano nangyari sa kanya? He rose up again. So sana siya ngayon? Heaven. So that means nga, He wants all of us to go to heaven one day. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We have a cell phone. Hindi, wala tayong number ni Jesus. So how can we, how can we talk to Him? Prayer. Hindi yung prayer maka, maka save sa atin. It's by trusting in Him.
all you have to do. Dear Jesus, today I realize I am a sinner. And because of my sins, I don't deserve heaven. But Jesus, I believe na matay ka para sa akin at namuhay ulit. Please Jesus, save me. Take me to heaven when I die. God bless for Okay, bro. thank you. I remember back in college, you know, we would go door to door and you know, you just knock at their pe- the people's door and you say, "Hey, can I invite you to church?" Boom. They shut the door at your face. You go to the next door. You keep on going because although they reject you, but still there's another person waiting for you to share them the gospel. When I asked them if they were to die, are they 100% sure they're going to heaven? And some of them, they said, oh, I'm a religious person. Or they would say, oh, yes, I go to church, but I'm not 100% sure. And there's other people that I've also met. They're Catholics and, you know, they, they believe in idols. And also there were some that, especially um, what you will call the uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, they don't believe in heaven. They don't believe in hell. So it's hard for them sometimes to actually go through the plan of salvation because they are more into arguing with you. And in that case, if you cannot win them, you just, you know, explain to them how they can know for sure. And if they reject it, you just tell them, thank you for, you know, letting me talk to you. And you just pray for them that one day they would come to know Christ as their personal Savior. That guy that I met, he was really into arguing with me and telling me that his, his um, religion, you know, is the only way. And I told him, according to John 14, verse 6, just said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. As we start going, and I asked him a question, okay, let's just give me a be- benefit of, of a doubt. Let's say I'm right and you are wrong. Let me just go through the plan of salvation and show you how you can know for sure you're going to heaven. And he started listening. But of course, at the middle of the conversation, he was asking questions and questions. So I had to try to um, stick in, this, in the one topic and not go on other you know, topics on the side. But it, was, it really turned out great because at the end, he, Although he didn't decide to pray with me, he said, I will just do it personally. So there are times that you would meet people on the street, like you don't know their background. You don't know what church they, they've gone through. So you just have to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you, you know, and just do your best. Oh, the girls were fantastic. I mean, when I asked them the question, one of them actually said, uh, I'm, I'm, I go to a born again, you know, church and I said, well, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you're going to heaven? And she said, well, I do good works and I go to church, you know, I all, I do all this stuff. I was like, okay, let's, let's, let me ask you this. If Jesus was standing in the door of heaven and said, why should I let you in? What would you have told him? And for a minute, they were like, they paused. They didn't know what to say. And one of them, she was like, I'll tell him that I'm his daughter. So I was like, okay, if you're not 100% sure you're going to heaven, let me just show you some scriptures in the Bible. And it was, it was really great how they were receptive to, um, you know, for me to sharing the gospel to them. And at the end, they were willing to, to accept Christ as their personal Savior. And it's really wonderful to see that although they are religious people, they go to church, two of them were Catholics, they didn't know for sure. They were like 50 or 70 percent. So I just showed them the plan of salvation, tell them how they can know for sure. It's not their good works that can save them. It's only Jesus Christ. As a young child, you know, growing up in a Christian home, you know, as a pastor's daughter, every day my mom would, you know, have devotion with us and it would share us, um, you know, the Bible and, uh, and stories. And I remember at a young age, my mom asked my brother and I, if you were to die today, are you 100% sure you're going to heaven? I always said, yes, mom, I want to accept Christ as my personal savior. But not until when I went to Bible school that I realized I'm still lost and I needed a savior. 
And during my first semester, I decided I need to secure my salvation. And that just put a burden in my heart to reach out more souls for the gospel. Because there's many more people out there that are still lost and they need Jesus. The only person that can take them to heaven is Jesus. Not their good works, not their religion, it's Jesus Christ. I encourage them, first of all, have a walk with God. And that's the most important thing. You know, read your Bible and pray every day. I think that is the beginning of how you can be involved in the ministry. So one of the encouragements I would give to a person who is a Christian, like the Bible says in Jude chapter 1, verse um, 22, and of some having have compassion, making a difference. I believe that as a Christian, God expects us to have compassion for everyone because we have a loving God. For God so loved the world. So to us, it is our responsibility. I, I have no excuse to tell God, God, I'm sorry. I, I wasn't able to share. I was busy. To me, it's like, how could I not um, have compassion? Me, I was on my way to hell and somebody just came and rescued me, pulled me out from that eternal damnation. And it is my honor. It, it is my, the little least that I, I could be thankful of is to tell another person where I was about to go, hey bro, stop. God loves you. Don't do that to yourself. I remember a friend, I was in high school. He was cutting himself. I don't know, I was not used to that uh, as a preacher's kid. I was like, so I was like, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I was like, give me that, give me that. And that kind of reminds me, I think it's spiritually, people are trying to block their lives with a lot of things and their depression by, you know, filling their lives with a lot of things of the world. And we as Christians, as light, are there to say, stop, don't do that to yourself. Your life has a meaning. You are precious in God's sight and God loves you. And if we don't warn them, they will keep copying themselves. And it's me, it's like that guilt that's like, why could I not just stop him, you know? I have all this time to do everything, to play, you know, all the internments. And to even just spend two minutes, five minutes to, to tell them, somebody cares for you. I'm praying for you. Your life matter. And I'm here to tell you that, you know, I love you and God loves you more. And He wants to do something big in your life. So I encourage every Christian, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, helping people, praying for them, Whatever it is, you know, you may not do what I'm doing right now, but the, uh, having compassion make a great difference in lives of children, young people, deaf, blind people. And heaven will only tell us what a great impact we did in that one life, a friend. And now they are using, you're being used in God's work because you step out. You tell them about God's love. You tell them where God took you from. You tell them why you were struggling. You thought it was the end. And that light of God came in your life and telling them, let's go, He's the way, He's the truth, He's the life. No man cometh into the Father, but only through Jesus Christ. So let's keep on reaching the world while we can. We're gonna go there, encourage their uh, pastors. Uh, we're gonna meet with them, uh, encourage their church. Magkano po ngayon ang tuyo? Okay, para madali tayo ah! Tuturuan namin kayo ng kanta. 